episode of your favorite Ross Clark podcast, man. Any other podcast in a Chen Cell office, Yaman yeah, up the sponsor food. Yeah, it's not crazy. You can't even introduce yourself. Good idea. They gave me the drug again, you know. I swear to <laughs> <up. laughs> What did you get? Bro, one thing about me, yeah. Not take slice of food, bro. I'm in the English chicken kitchen. I'm sitting down here. Like, me and Tyler having a meeting with the owner, yeah. Well, I've eaten my dumpling burger. Like, I don't eat it. Well, what did you get? Um, barbecue. I don't think this one's good. Oh, I swear to God. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because you told me to get the jerk. I didn't. I got two barbecues. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 shiny, mate. You say you that, I was speaking to the owner of Chicken Kitchen, so I showed him, yeah. Big him up, man. I had a meeting talking about the, the sponsorship and whatever, bro. As I'm talking, I can smell my face. <laughs> I sweat, bro. I was getting mad symptoms. I like the spicy food, yeah. Like, and those things running, my hair's starting to rise. Bro, it's a meat, bro. Yeah, it's like, yeah, bro. I swear to God. It's like how, man. From Grenada, Jamaica, you can't handle it. Bro, I can't handle it. Me too, though. Shut up. Yeah, I didn't really like it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. But I feel like spice just ruins your food, bro. I like spice. You can't taste your food. You're just worried about your mouth burning. Yeah. It can't even. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I'm writing, man. I hear that, my man. Introduce yourself, man. Who are you, bro? Who are you talking about? Who are you talking about, man? But listen, it's Tay in the building. Tay and Trent Sutter. Back with another episode. Energize, let's give a little minute. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Let me take this one. Alive, man. Alive, alive. We've got my boy, Brooke in the building. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, class, class. You know, you, know, you already know. Yeah, yeah man. Mobile Blends here. Come on, get yeah. me, man. We're here today. Mobile Blends. Chat what we're doing. Actually, before we even get to Mobile Blends, yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about how long I've known you still. I've, I've known you for a good couple years, man. Remember? Like I told you, yeah? Yeah. By the way, you see when you do that, yeah? That's messing up the audio of all of our mics. Because remember, it's all blended together. So I just, I just say that yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> guys. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, yeah. 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 I've got a crazy picture of you and me last time in the office and it's me and Chicken Kitchen. I know, I saw it. Bro, you can't do that. You know how many times I've seen that on your story? I've posted the picture on my stack the other day, but I covered, I covered your face with an emoji. You see if I took off the emoji, <laughs> bro, I just <laughs> see a whole piece of chicken hanging out of my head. And my mom's like, I'm sorting that. I'm 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 like, I'm sorting that. i am my, I've had like three fights in my life. Two of my fights came from Boston. Man. That's how you know I was, I was passionate about London. Oh, word. Proper. One day I'll speak about all the fights, bro. Man, just scrapping on the boards and that. Like. <laughs> but, um, yeah, obviously, that, obviously, back in school days, every school was playing against each other's schools and whatever. What school did you go to? Drayton. Drayton. I went to Greenfield and Hyatt. But you see, my school, though, you had no basketball. Though. You just had bare men that liked basketball, but can't really play. Yeah. This school is a team full of people that play basketball yeah. outside of school. Do you know different. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's different. Bro, I remember. Yeah. That's a hard. That's how I remember. Yeah. Different. I, sometimes I wish I even went to your school because you know that we're training and whatnot, and I'm thinking, you lot are just so dead. Like, I'm getting frustrated. Like, yeah, you lot just can't. Yeah, nah, yeah. But one time I'm playing against his school now, yeah. And I remember because when I first started playing basketball, I was mad short. I don't know where I grew from, but I'm just mad short. Oh, so I'm yeah. seeing Brooke now. This guy's a giant six foot ten. Yeah. Oh, like, that's... Oh, Put it on mute, Mohammed, yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay, man. No, man, no, no, no. Man, calm, no problem. But I'm good. Yeah, we're playing, um, playing basketball now. Boom, boom, boom. I get the ball. This is a nice chance for me. I'm going to score now. Yeah. Running up to the hoop. Go for a layup. I'm laying it up nicely. Nothing. No one's around me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, this is how deep it is. I'm looking down. Yeah. And I see a shadow on the floor. Yeah. I see a shadow on the floor, but the shadow is starting to raise closer to me. Yeah. So like, as bro, as I'm going up to the hoop, yeah, I'm looking down, but I'm seeing a shadow here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I throw the ball up, I see. It. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> just clap the ball back off the backboard. I say, yeah, lit. <laughs> we used to yeah. kill every school we played. Yeah. We went unbeaten last like, three years in a row. Yeah. yeah. Until we got to youth games, and we went, we played, we played in the south. Mm. They killed us. Yeah. Yeah. I cried. 
ruin that street. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first time I've ever cried at Swarthmore. I hear it still. It it's just all emotional. Yeah. Was, it emotional? Emotional? was it like a smoking? Did they smoke? Like, nah, it was, like, it was a close game. Oh, okay. And that's the worst yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, it was close. Bro. It was literally, what, three points? Mm-hmm. What do you think of the food, man? You man was done off your thing already. Why are you doing that? Yeah, let me warm up and that you yeah, yeah. yeah. mm-hmm. 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 every time. Every time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that your go-to order when you go? No, mine is um, the jerk chicken one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the barbecue. Yeah. But even this ain't too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, chicken's too lame, man. Chicken, chicken, chicken. I'm trying something different today. Me and my, my healthy ways. I've got a veg burger. It comes different than this. No, I'm saying. Even, it's, it's got to the point where every time I go, large up Stacey, she knows what I'm gonna get, and she's just there looking at me as I'm walking in, just this boy, like this constantly <laughs> thinking, yeah, she knows exactly what I'm gonna get. You know what I mean? So like today, I'm gonna change it up. So you know what? I'm gonna let's have a taste test right now because I'm pretty sure you never. No, I'm never travel slow though. I'm not trying to force myself. I can't eat coleslaw. I like you know, like it. I'm no, a different guy, you know. Like the bare foods I don't like. I've never seen that. No, nah, that's like me. I'm a picky eater. Like, I'm picky. Yeah, well, I'm nice. Mm-hmm. Man, this one lemon still. Nice. What's in it? Messy, but halloumi, mm-hmm. cheese, I'm seeing some coleslaw in there, avocado, and planting. Yeah. What, there's no that meat? No, I just said veg burger, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but you know that, you know that sometimes they have like, <laughs> the meat that's not really meat, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's love for them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro, no meat still. No meat or fake meat still. I hear it still. I'm going to help you with I was demanding though, that. Let's, before you even jump into the party, I was demanding. Let's tell them what they need to say. Bro, you go first, man. Anyway, I'm here. <laughs> um, I'll go. I'm good, bro. So by the time this comes out, it would have already been a week since I've done my webinar. So obviously, this is our first time really wrapping together, you know what I'm trying to say that. Um, what was I going to say? But me, so obviously, I do a few different things. Obviously, podcasts, I work. And then I've got this new like venture I'm starting called Career Path Pro, where I'm teaching people how to scale and navigate their career. Now, obviously, like I said, it's our first time meeting, but I, pi- I pitched my job to the CEO of my career in it and like created my own role for myself. And I've got a lot of people who are asking me, like, how do you do the things you're doing, etc. So I'm trying to teach other people how to do it. So to answer your question, I'm good because yesterday I done my first webinar for that and it went quite well, I would say, you know what I mean? That like, Tay was there, other ones in the mandem was there as well, giving me support and feedback. And it was just like a mental barrier for myself because like, it's public speaking and like running sessions and talking to people, group sessions, yeah. I used to kind of be mad nervous to do it like start of this year. And this year I kind of forced myself to start getting into it, innit? So the fact I done it in yesterday and you know, I just feel good still. Yeah. So I'm good, man. Awesome. I'm good still. Awesome. 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 How are you, man? Nah, me too, bro. I'm, I'm good, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, like, like, I guess it's treating me well. Yeah. You know, with the barbering thing. Like a new, a new direction. New venture. Yeah, yeah. So how, how long have you been shooting with me, so? Uh, three years. Three years, yeah, yeah. Is that your main bag? So it's been shot. Uh, no, I work as well. Yeah. I work as well. I really recently decided that I wanted to make this something. Yeah. So you've been trimming for like three years, but this is yeah. recently you're turning it into a business. Yeah, literally. Yeah. I hear it's under the radar type of thing. I hear that. What made you, what made you first pick up them clippings? You know what? It was when I was in America. Mm. We wasn't like we would eat, sleep, basketball. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? So we didn't have much time to do anything. Mm. Time to go barbers and that. There wasn't any time. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. So one day I just thought, why not? Mm. The first few times, the worst thing I've ever done about it. Were you trimming yourself? Yeah, yeah, I was trimming myself. Hey, okay. I'm sure to do that, you know. Mm. Nah, bro, I'm telling you, do it, bro. Ben, I'm telling you, bro. It's, it's easier than you think. Way easier, way easier. I feel like I just write myself off, bruv, and I patch up my head. Did you ever do that? Right, you know what I'm saying? I've done it before, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I messed up my whole thing. <laughs> you see me? I was just a mad, like, impulsive youth, yeah? So I remember one time I looked in the mirror, I said, shit, I need a trim. These times were probably like year seven, year eight. Yeah. I ain't really got no dough, I just want my mum in it. I didn't have no clippings, yeah, so you're not probably thinking, how did you trim yourself? Do you know how I got? Scissors. 
I got a reason, bro. I got a reason. I try to give myself a yeah, shape, bro. Thing. Well, I pushed up my thing like, up here, bro. My like, hair <laughs> was crazy. I had some crazy hair experiences. I remember as well, like, when I was in that, like, maybe year, I'm old now. I was like year 10, yeah? Yeah. I'm like, I had a little girlfriend at school, whatever. Mm. And I'm saying, I'm growing up my hair, but I don't like the texture of my hair too much. I want to curl it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really know about Joe, that like, now I put gel in my hair and I just curl it up naturally. Mm. I'm thinking, wow, so what I need to do, I need to escort my hair now, yeah? So I went and got on. Um, nah, you ruined it. Oh, you ruined it still. Yes, I didn't go. I know there's a lot of you escort bandits back in the day who used to do them too there as well, bro. So that team yeah, rubbed me out, bro. Yeah. I'm not even gonna lie, so I got the escort thing. They got Jerry, bro. My dad's saying, <laughs> my dad's saying, Tate, yo, man. My dad's saying, Tate, do not do it. She said, Dad, no, nah, I'm doing it. My mum said, yeah, you should do it, man. you should do it, I'll do it for you. I was like, alright, cool, mum's gonna do it then. So, bro, I remember, like, I put my head over the bathtub now. She's rubbing this thing on my hair. She didn't read the box, though. And she said, just keep it in your hair for, like, 15 minutes and then you wash it out. Bro, I kept it in my hair for 15 minutes. But now my hair's starting to, like, stay yeah, hot now. <laughs> my hair's getting hot right now. Like, What's going on? You know what I'm saying? So, washed it out now. Bear in mind, like, this is bare water over my face, yeah. So I wipe my face at the towel, bro, and I look in the mirror, bro, I had a comb over, I swear down. <laughs> like, you know, like, white boys, you, you know, you <laughs> bro, you know that you can do this with your head? Like, like a comb, I swear down, I had a comb over, bro, you know that? Like, yeah, yeah, I dropped to my knees and I was like, I said, no, this is a Sunday, I'm at school tomorrow, bro, like, it's tight. It's tight. Yeah, I've done the escorting as well. Swear down. Yeah, I, I did it. And after I did it, after like a week. I was telling people I was cool, bro. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. what I wanted to do. I'm not gonna lie, but my team, I went straight from black to white. Like, yeah. I had no so, coolie sit down. You know I, mean? I remember I was on my estate one time. Mm. I was young, and we were playing outside. Mm. Obviously, it started raining. Mm. Um, <laughs> I shake up my hair, mm. like, curling it up, trying to tell everyone I'm cool. Like, mm. They were not hearing it. Oh, they started already. <laughs> <ready. laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're smart for it though because like see every man needs a barber mm. to the end of time every single man needs a barber and with nowadays the way the things are set yeah like people hold like pride in their presence well they've always been doing that more time so now you're able to chop and make peace just off the fact that man needs to be looking fresh or shiny a barber but yeah. you're always gonna have clientele you're always gonna have business you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah, yeah. especially you trim yourself innit? yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> self, self done you know what i mean but um it's smart still, like, if I didn't do the things I'm doing now, at the back of my head when I was younger, I was always looking at, yeah, like, what about cutting hair? I know bare man you just start cutting yeah, hair. My dad used to cut my hair still. Yeah, what was that like? My dad was telling me a story before I even get into me, he was saying that he started cutting hair when he was, like, 20, yeah? But obviously, he wasn't cutting himself, he's cutting other people. So yeah. I've got an uncle called Stephen. I'm not really too close to Stephen, but I think I'm not close to him because of the situation with my dad, yeah? I think when my, after my dad cut, this uncle's hair, like, they just stopped speaking. <laughs> like, I, just stopped, I don't even really know him that way. Like, I swear to God. My dad said that one time he started chilling or whatever. Like, I actually don't really know my man. Like, I've seen him at family functions, but I don't even chat to him. Because him and my dad don't talk. Because of the trim. Like, way back. Like, That's over the trim. That's crazy. Yeah, my dad, on, my dad must have like, smashed up his hairline, like, <laughs> mad patches in his hair. But my dad said that he just kept on training. And then obviously, as I started growing up, he started cutting my hair. So, yeah. see my dad. Hard barber when he wanted to be, do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like, sometimes, like, you know, primary school, like, I'm, I'm a he could, I've got like the night tick of my yeah, hair and whatever. Yeah, that's all, yeah, 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 that's yeah, my yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah. dad. Yeah. But then sometimes my dad can't be out to my hairline, just a little, you know, that just a little, yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, when you on the phone, like, yo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. just yeah. 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 mad sometimes. Yeah. So when I hit like 14, <laughs> I said, Dad, like, we gotta wrap this up, start playing Barbie store, but. Listen, your hair is important, man. I'm not gonna lie. Your hair, your hair is a big part. Mm -hmm. of that. Your, your confidence, your personality. Do you not reckon you could rock the the ball team? Mm -hmm. I think I could still. Yeah, but the thing is, you look like the patient, so you could rock it. Yeah, you got the patient. My team not like you. Like <laughs> nah, you got the patient. Them still. Like. <laughs> you I'm got the Santa thing still. The Ricky Rose. <laughs> yeah, man, I think I would rock the be the the ball team, but like when I'm like thirty. Yeah. I don't think I've got a choice. I think I'm actually gonna go bold. Touch wood, I don't even know it. There's wood behind there, yeah. But I saw something online that said, if your dad's bold and your mum's dad's bold, you're likely to be bold. 
But I hear what, yeah? I want to do something different. So I was saying to Tim before this episode, yeah, I want to go back to basics. Obviously, it's your first time coming on. When we first started this podcast, it was just mad gems, like gems, 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 and not everyone watching here can relate, yeah? So I got a list of talk, not even talking points, but questions you could say, yeah, that I want to touch on, and I want to get both of your opinions. And I want you to go first, because obviously, it's your first time hopping on the pod. So, question number one, silent drum roll, please, yeah, is what does imposter syndrome mean to you? What does imposter syndrome mean to you? Well, I've gone through that before. I've done that. I know, you know. Mm. Uh, actually, I have. Yeah. Um, I have, yeah. So, yeah, what? Yeah, basically, when I went to America, obviously, you know, I went for basketball. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then COVID happened. All of that happened. I had to come back. Mm. I so when I come back, everyone around me is like playing football type of thing. Yeah. And then I don't know why, but I'm seeing everyone around me kicking balls. It made me switch over, but obviously I knew I'm not a football man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that as well. I remember you saying you're going over to the yeah, football like, so I knew wholeheartedly I was never a footballer. I played it when I was younger. That's mm-hmm. about it. But ain't the same in it. Yeah, but in, like within sports, basketball is my thing. Mm. And then, as time as time went on, I started to feel like, you know, this is really not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because you're shit. <laughs> no, I wasn't even shit. That's the thing, like, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> 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 no, no, like, genuinely, yeah. yeah. Not to do, but I'm a whole, I'm a baller. Do you know what I'm yeah, trying to yeah, say? Yeah. 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 That, that was your, that was your experience. Yeah, that was my experience with Foster Stone. Yeah, yeah, I hear it is, man. I hear it still. Yeah, yeah. Well, it changed everything. I agree still. You saying, have I gone through it before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And to what extent? Um, uh, so obviously, I had, I've had Trendsetter for years, innit? Like, that's yeah. what I'm known for. Mm. Trendsetter, I started it when I was young, baby boy, 15, 16 years old. I got the brand to a good point. Like, you don't can see it. Like, we're inside the office, innit? Yeah, we yeah. got the... So over them that five year period, we got to the point where the brand was operating well. Yeah. And one thing I said to myself when I first started, when I get to a certain point, I want to make sure that I can help other people with their clothing brands. Yeah. Yeah. Once I get trendset across the line, I'm gonna try and turn back and help other people now. Yeah. So it's crazy because I got to that point now where I feel like I'm in a good position to help anyone who wants to start a clothing brand to get to where they need to get. But well, like teaching I, people and that, yeah, yeah like teaching people. So. I came up with this whole idea called brand elevation, which is out there now. But I went through a period of like just doubting myself and saying, bro, like, am I in a position to really teach other people how to build their clothing brand? Yeah. But like, I went through this period for like a good six, seven months. And you know this because I'm speaking to you. Yeah, yeah. Like, the man never about this is wrong. The man was all saying, well, you're crazy. Like, Trendset has been featured in GQ magazine. You've had some of the biggest artists in the world working on brand. You just built your own office. Like, what are you talking about? Of course you're qualified. But something inside me was saying, Nah, it's not even that. Like, you know, yeah. know what I'm saying? Then I saw a quote that said something like, it said, oh, I think Azefa said this to us. Shout out Azefa. Big him up, man. He said, he said, even a 10 year old can teach a five year old. And when he said that, I was like, no, it's not cool. In this situation, I'm the 10 year old. I just need to fe- find people that are five year old and I can teach yeah. them how to get to the 10. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So after I heard that, I said, yeah, man, let me get this thing started. And since I started it, like, Obviously, selfishly, it's done well for me as a business, but selflessly, it's helped a lot of people build their clothing brand as well. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people that, through brand elevation and the whole thing that I've set up, like their brands are operating well. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's that's the one time I went through it. I'm not going to lie. Let me ask you this, yeah? Mm. I hear that. And obviously, I was there through the steps. Mm. I remember when you were having conversations with me and the man them doubting and stuff, yeah? yeah? Why do you... What... Is the reason behind you having self-doubt because everyone outside of you 
can see me and Brooke can see like right that bro's built into an office that like, of course you must have some level of success. Yeah. Why couldn't you see that? Why did that lead to you having imposter syndrome? Do you know what's fucked, yeah? I feel that like it's a it's a gift and a curse. The gift is that um, we all got big ambitions, yeah, but yeah. it's a curse because it's like I'm standing at where I'm at right now and I'm looking at where I want to be and I can see there's a mad distance in between, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm not really looking at where I'm at right now to say, yeah, like I've achieved all the things. Even though in the back of my mind I know I've done well, but really and truly there's a lot more that needs to be done, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So that was my mindset. That's probably where I had that whole period where I'm just stagnating and thinking, I don't really want to do this because I know Trent's are so far from where I want it to be, yeah. even though it's doing all right now, do you know what I'm saying? What so, about you, bro? I'm off the bare question. Like, would you say that you're someone who like, hold yourself to the highest standard? Like, you have like, a very high expectation of yourself, or you're not really like that? Uh, you know what I am, yeah? But the thing is with me, no matter how far I get, I feel like I'm always, I come, I put myself in comparison with other, other people mm. who's ahead of me. Mm. And then it throws me off a lot, bro. Mm. Like, I'll be honest. I don't know, like, I just don't see, like, the progress, even though there's mad progress in between from yeah. where I started and where I am now. Yeah. I don't see it unless I'm at the end goal. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? And do you know why that's a trip, though? Because there's never going to be an end goal. Like, once you get to that's this end goal, there's going to be a whole next one that that's needs to get saying. to. Do you know what I'm saying? I see something the other day. It said, um, don't track your success about how, about, don't track your success from where you are now to where you want to go track your success from where you was to where you are now. So rather than looking now in the future, look at your past to the present, you know what I'm saying? And see that distance, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that cause the same thing, it's still mm-hmm. the same shit. What about you, though? Are you just trying to go for it? Because I know it. Because I've asked a bad question. So I can hear you. Bro, <laughs> that's what, don't be kind of What do you mean? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you might put me out. <laughs> um, shit, no jokes. For me, I disagree, I agree with your points, both of your points. Yeah. Comparison is a key for all joy, man. It's a thin line between comparison, comparing yourself to someone else, yeah. and I don't want to say resenting, but looking to the next person's green grass or whatever they were going on and dimming your own light. Wait, 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 wait. Did you press the red button on that? And what? Is it filming? It's filming, bro. Yeah. Why are you trying to. Why are you trying to play games with me today? Let's film it. I wasn't even near the thing. Look at the bird. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, did you press record when we first started? Oh, yeah, it's on, bro. I'm, like, I'm just making sure. Oh, you don't trust me. We've been doing this for two years and you don't trust me in my thing, man. What the fuck? Because this is going well. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Carry on, though, man. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, for me, whenever I experienced the imposter syndrome, even when we started this podcast, if I'm being real, because deeper, yeah. We started this podcast when we was 19 years old, yeah? And we actually give a mindset gems to people. Right. So imagine, like, That's your crazy. mum or your dad thinking, Shut this boy, don't do nothing <laughs> about, yeah. about, about books. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I remember sometimes I'd have an episode and I'd tell my mum what we spoke about and my mum actually disagreed with me. And I'd be like, oh, like, <laughs> shit, like, maybe my team's not levels like that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to feel imposter syndrome about kind of putting myself out there and spreading my word. Yeah. And, like, you could say dropping gems or giving knowledge to others. But just like Tay said that Hazeka told him, like a 10 year old can still give advice to a five year old. So just because there's people I can still learn from doesn't mean that within myself, I'm not capable, capable to teach other people. Like we've got a little cousin who's sitting right here. You guys can't see him. Oh, yet. Yeah, I can still tell him and put him onto some advice that I've learned because I'm his elder, but his mum's my elder. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? That's true. Mm. But you can also help people that's older than you. Nah, true, 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 true. Uh, I know through the podcast, we've helped a lot of people. Well, not even helped, but our perspectives have helped them in their situations yeah. who are much older than us. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even like the conversation was talking about like the influence that our fathers have in our life. Yeah. I've had personal conversations with people who's like 10 years plus. They said, tell you that. I heard that podcast. And because of that podcast, I went out and I reached out to my dad. And yeah. I spoke to them and how many years. Do you know what I'm saying? Impact, man. That's impact. I'm not going to lie yeah. to you, so... Yeah, man, but I hear it because when we first started the podcast as well, sometimes like, I'm sitting there and I'm talking, I'm thinking, bro, we need you to be saying all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was, bro. It's just real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, real life. But, but you got to get over that, man, because like, if you feel too much of that, it will just stop you from taking action. Imagine if we kind of acted on 
that feeling of him being an imposter and we decided to start the podcast. Yeah. How did you get over it though? I think by doing the thing, and it sounds dumb, but just doing more episodes, it's repetition, isn't it? Like when you first go to gym, it's uncomfortable. When you mm. first just doing basketball or whatever, or your first or match in the USA or barbering, it was uncomfortable. Yeah. You know what I mean? You might not feel like you're worthy of man paying you thirty pound a head for a trip. But the more you do it, the more you start to believe in yourself. You know what I'm trying to yeah. say? Yeah. So like, that's what I would say. So. I'm looking mad struck. I was gonna say it's Bill that. What do you mean you're gonna say? I was gonna say what your dad told me again. I see that. That's crazy. 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 I've always yeah, tripped up. He is, he is. He always, puts me to shame. Yeah, I've always yeah, tripped yeah, up. Since the other day, yeah, there's been times when I went to film in the old studio and I ain't got no chip with my do-rags on. Yeah. And bro stepping out, swagger down, yeah, trends yeah. ahead. So I'm thinking, shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Man. I'm, let this cancel today or something, bro. <laughs> Listen, the rolls are reversed yeah, right now because you just got your hair done. You're looking, my head. looking crisp, bro. I'm no, looking no, mad no, scruff and rough. I've got the mini afro, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I reckon let's do a trip live. Yeah, live. Yeah, 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 different, man. Hop in the seat, man. Yeah, yeah, right man. Right now. And what podcast you got to know that dude does trip live? Like. Like. Yeah, this different stuff. You don't know about a podcast now. We're gonna call this. Well, what's the name for this one still? Oh, is this a uh, Trim Gems? Nah, trim Gems. Bang, so that, <laughs> that's that's super bang. shit. Yeah, don't bang. Don't bang. Yeah, don't rock it with that one. <laughs> yeah, I take it back still. Um, I don't know what we're calling this one still. I have something to do with that. Cool. But whilst you you lot are doing a trim mm. after, you know what I mean? Let me get in that seat as well. Yeah, I'm gonna say yeah, kill two birds with one stone. I'm gonna say let's keep it going in it. So I've got a next topic I want to run you through now. Yeah, and I want to get. Your advice. What is the importance of putting yourself out there? The importance of putting yourself out there. Let's talk branding. Let's go back. Let me get this mic. I feel like personal branding in today's, I was going to say day and age, but like, it's real, man, and it's very important, isn't it? Mm. So I feel like, what does personal branding mean to you? What does personal branding mean to me? Yeah. That's a broad question, bro, man. Should I make it a bit more specific, bro? Because that, I think it's deep. Alright, what's the importance of putting yourself out there on social media? Good question, brother. Right, you mm-hmm. didn't question me. Do try. I say, um, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to putting yourself out there on social media, all you need to understand is yeah, that your personal brand, but your they say your personal brand, but your brand, isn't it? You are a brand, isn't it? So, yeah. When you're showing on social, when you're show, when you're showing up on social media, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you know what? I'm gonna start thinking about that. because that's free, you know. That's calm, that's free, that's free, you know? that's calm, it's calm, it's calm. You're gonna see me. And bro, just for that, just fuck up in there. Yeah, just give him, do you know what I'm saying? Bad enough. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, people buy from people, innit? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's. A decision that I'm even now starting trendset as well. I can either, either go out there and build trendset on the way where yeah. you just know trendset or trendset or mm-hmm. you know trendset or through me, do you know what I'm saying? And because I've chosen that route where I'm putting on, putting people into trendset through me, I feel like I'm able to capture a big audience at once, do you know what I'm saying? And obviously, like, growing up in school, I started my clothing brand young. I had a big group of friends, do you know what I'm saying? I had a big, like, network. So naturally, all of them people around me, they're buying into the brand, but they're also buying into the tape, like the story behind the brand as well, do you know what I'm saying? So, but like when it comes to your personal brand, it gives you the opportunity just to reach, reach your audience, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Man, you know, so. what do you think, bro? What was the question I answered, bro? Like, what's the importance of personal, put, what's the importance of putting put, stuff out there? Put, 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 <laughs> Shut up, man! man. <laughs> yeah, man, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just choking on this vibe. One second, there's no way I can... Are oh, you want to plug that in? Um, boom, boom, boom. Recollect the trips. Uh, you know what? You might have stretched. Flipping. Oh, I was going to say, what's the importance of putting yourself out there on social media? Oh, I'm going to extinguish it. It's big, so. Uh, you, you, you got chopped up. I'm going to go and get an extension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you got, you got chopped up. Because take off the mic. I didn't know you really That part didn't come. Yeah, you know what it is? It's a hard question for me, you know, mm-hmm. because me, I don't really, 
Yo, Andy, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. Like, social media for me, I don't know how to work it. Well, not, I know how to work it, but yeah. I'm not really on it like that. Mm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But in terms of, like, barbering, I mean, that's where you're going to get the most clientele. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Putting out there, TikToks, Instagrams. You see it everywhere. You see it everywhere, man. Everywhere, man. Like, everyone got a, got a page for anything they're doing. Yeah. Whether it's clothing, barbering. Everything, man. Any service. Has some sort of social presence. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. that's how it is now. Yeah. So then for you, yeah, like, what are you doing right now to put yourself out there for your business? For you know what? For the last month or so, I've just been hitting people up like I hit Tay. Yeah. And he's told you. Yeah. I'm just giving out free trips. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Going to people's houses, wherever it is. You could be in Brum. Yeah. I'm going there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm there. I rate, you know what I'm trying to say? I that still. So I can get the content to have plus the word of mouth. Word of mouth builds a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm That's to true, you know, that referral still. Yeah, yeah, the referral. That's actually so true. It helps, man. Yeah. It helps. Um, so let me ask you, let me ask you another question, yeah. What sort of things could you be doing better to promote yourself on social media for your uh, uh, business? You know, I actually using Instagram. Yeah. I said after this, it's not good. Yeah, like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. It's just there, yeah, no followers, no nothing. It's just there. Yeah. yeah. But it's like I'm kind of dilly dallying, just getting it started. Yeah. So now, that's the next step for me. Yeah, yeah. Like actually using it, pushing it yeah. everywhere. No, yeah. yeah, I agree with you, bro. That's it's so important nowadays, isn't it? Because like, like how you say, um, Tay's on. You're trimming Tay, then you're gonna trim me because obviously Tay told me, yeah. yeah. That's one person word of mouth. But then say if you just recorded you trimming Tay, for example, on Snapchat yeah. or TikTok, you could automatically get five hundred people that's in ten saying. minutes. You would have seen your your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now that thousand, ten of them could have reached out to you for a trip. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's important, bro. Word up, word up, word up. What about you? Ask the question yourself. No, I think. So what's it? What's the importance of yeah, putting yourself media, out there? Yeah. Out them. I think, yeah, like opportunities, man. So let's let me even just say, like, with the podcast, yeah, you know how many people have reached out to both me and bro mm-hmm. saying, Yo, I know you got a podcast, I'm, I'm doing this thing, I see your type of energy, your vibe, here's how we can collab, or would you be open to this? Like, just by <laughs> looking at that, I was looking at that, oh, 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 just by putting yourself out there, yeah, I think it helps because you never know what opportunities can come back mm-hmm. by you putting yourself out there, come back by you just making a TikTok. Like, I'm sure you. What, what opportunity comes from you? This is going to be a fun I couldn't see this guy's big head in the corner of my eyes. Uh, what opportunities have come for me uh, via the podcast? Speaking again. <laughs> you are an idiot. You're a man. Speaking engagement, so I'd say. Like, shout out Alicia. Um, who runs Black Create Connect. Like, I know one of the reasons that she asked me to speak on her podcast is because she knew that I had our, our podcast, you know what I mean? And we'd obviously been doing it for a couple of years still. So what did that podcast go? That was good, man. I feel like every podcast has a different kind of vibe. Like, I'm sure you've been on a couple as well, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a good episode, though, but that was a bit more of like a careers-led, mm-hmm. telling my story, that kind of vibe, whereas yeah. like, Ours, and it's not even a comparison, but obviously this is our pod, so yeah. I know I can come with whatever I want to come with, but yeah. you just got to kind of follow suit with how someone else's kind of setup is, does that make sense? Yeah. But it was a good episode nonetheless, make sure you lot go check it out, um, the podcast is called Black Create Connect. Dope, um, dope, dope, so yeah. dope, 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 dope. I have a question for the both of you, yeah? yeah. What do you look like, school like, 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 I'm talking that. Like, right, what's your favourite, what's your favourite year in school? Good question, man. Favorite year. year in school. Easily year nine. Year twelve. Year twelve. Yeah. Wait, wait, you go first. Why you year nine? Because that's before everything serious happened. Mm. Like, I was still like being silly in school. Yeah. Year like, ten, when you started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Year mm. ten, year eleven. That's when it got serious. I was like, shit. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't even be the class clown anymore. <laughs> <laughs> even though I still was. I don't yeah. know why. Like, it was stupid. When I look back. It was stupid, but yeah. 
Man was there for year eight school. Well, I don't you know why, because year seven, like, you're the baby of the school. You're just getting to terms with the school and whatnot. Yeah. You're trying to figure out your friends. Year nine for me, that was the year before flipping GCSEs. I had GCSEs in year 10, so I had already GCSEs in year 10. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, year nine, I had to kind of pattern up. Year eight, though, that was my year. That year, I was just I'm there fucking about the guys. <laughs> Wait, so this is hard, like, what other, you said this before, what other podcasts do you know that I'm oh, live getting in the gym right now? We're just talking like it. You know what I'm saying, like, what's that? What's that? Like, I'm, I'm hearing that, yeah, 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 Getting trims or whatever, yeah. in our own office that we built. Your from office, scratch. man. We didn't build it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, no, I didn't build it. I didn't build it. I didn't build it. Because you know, you know, I say Arsenal. Because my boy, as much as I build or whatever, this is Energizer's home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Me, me, Casa Sucas. Me, Casa Sucas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, yeah, man. That's it's dope, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's dope. It's dope. I read that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just all over the place. I'm not gonna lie to you. You ate that. Alright, next question. Yeah. What do you guys think, Pete? Like, let's say you linked up with someone from your school now. Yeah. What do you think they would say about you back then? Like, how would they explain how Ty and Brooke was like back then? They would probably say Ty was just a short, bald headed, angry black boy, bro. I say that. Angry. I just a bit of a prick. I could see you be one of them kids that always want to fight but always get beat up. Bro, don't do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> always want to fight but always get beat up. You know what I mean? Is it because the early violations are trying to get me back now? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? They're always down to fight. That's how. You know what I mean? Wait, wait, see. No, 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 no. I read you because you had heart, even though you knew it was going to get fucked up, yeah. Yeah. it's no fault. Nah, nah yeah, bro, don't do that. Like, well, <laughs> let's tell him my story like he went to my school, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, but yeah. uh, that was, that's probably what people would say until, like, secondary and college times, innit? Like, mm-hmm. this used to be mad angry for no reason. There's always that one angry black kid that was me. Why was you angry, though? Well, that's a long story, innit? You already had them deep combos. Oh, I didn't see me in school, I couldn't yeah. get angry. Couldn't. Yeah. Couldn't. Like, it's one of them. I was happy all the time. <laughs> I don't even know why. Like. Yeah. Nah, obviously, I'd be like, I was in the middle, so. Well, I was in the middle, but I'm that guy that's always happy, but sometimes you can just do something and it pisses me off. Like, I'll tell you about the story here yeah, about basketball. I remember, should I say his name? Yeah, I can say what they call my guy now, but they're cool now. Even after this, he's had a photo shoot for us at Trenton. Yeah. yeah. But Rio, my guy Rio, and that. Like, we both used to play basketball. But he wasn't in the team, innit? But he used to play, like, I remember in P, he was doing basketball, but this was new for us. We never used to do basketball for people. More times yeah. it's like cricket or football or them dumb sports, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So now basketball's come around, I'm gassed. Like, guys don't even get out of my way type of thing, you know what I'm saying? So this Rio guy, every time I'm going up for a shot, he's standing on the back of my hill, yeah? So every time I'm going up for a shot, I'm standing on the back of my hill, I'm saying, Rio, stop. Keep some doing it, keep some doing it, keep some doing it. Anyway, me and them's arguing now. P's done though, so I didn't even get no chance to do anything. But as soon as P's done, it's lunchtime. Every lunchtime, the man them go to the courts, he used to call them the movers. We went to the movers and we're playing basketball. Rio was there again. That guy never seen it again, bro. So now he's taking it from. Yeah, yeah. So at lunchtime, yeah. I was confirming the yeah. 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 I warned you, bad time. Yeah. Stop yeah. doing it. <laughs> He's I said, I said one more time. He's done it one more time. I said, oh. So then I went up for the shot. Obviously, nothing happened with the ball because it held onto the back of my knee. My heel, whatever the back side you want to call it. Yeah. Anyway, but me and him, I said, listen, now, it's one now. So me and his face is like each other now, like face to face. I'm saying, really, you're taking a piss. He's talking. I just. So red. Boom! You know them you know punches, yeah. Yeah. one of them. You know them punches, you can just feel that that one connected. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I felt it for you still. Obviously, my guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm happy that. I'm not gonna edit, obviously, yeah, love, love, love. No, 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 <laughs> that's why I feel like it's different between that. Like, yeah. The man them and girls, because more time, more often than not, that like, in school, 
They also have facts similar to that, but they're not speaking for a good two, three years. Mm. You see, after like a week, me and Rio was calm again. You know what I'm saying? I've got a lot of ego and pride, you know? Yeah, pretty much. That was one of my fight experiences still in school. Yeah. Now. It wasn't really a fight, because after that, nothing really happened in school. But yeah. Like, yeah. But even this whole hot air thing, like that was only me like primary, like early days to like year six. And then when I started doing kickboxing, mate, I was happy Harry, bro. Like everything was calm still. I say my favourite year was year 12, because obviously that's when I went to college. Um, and that's when I kind of met my people, do you know what I mean? Met Carlo, shout out to him, that's, a, that's all of our boys, yeah. I mean, that was me and him every day, like just, just causing trouble in, 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 well, we was in different years, but in the college, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Um, and I feel like that's when I kind of like really found myself, like find out about media, find out about what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, but it was a good year still. Cool, man. Cool, 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 cool. Have you ever lost a fight? Have I ever lost a fight? No, no, I've lost a fight in training, mm. but like other than the last time I had a fight in school was year ten, mm. and I hadn't lost a fight, like no ego. But in training, I've been fucked up, bro. I say it with chest. I've been, so I've been knocked out with everything, bro. Like, bro, you said, well, have I ever lost a fight? Mm. I have so. Yeah, but it yeah. wasn't really a fight. Yeah. He just, he just buffed me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's when I was young, like, he just like, buffed me, man. <laughs> he, he was like, that is funny, bro. He was like, fam. I said, he just buffed me, man. Yeah, like, bro. <laughs> gave me one. I said, yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> serious, bro. I told him yeah. once I was going to He gave me one. I didn't even bother, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He banged me, I turned around, I'm thinking, bro, that, <laughs> that is crazy, bro. Yeah, after so, that, after that, I said, nah, this can't happen again. <laughs> uh, 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 but obviously, we're all big man now, innit? So yeah, you can't yeah, really yeah, get yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, that. yeah, bro, it's not that, man. And I, we're, all, we're all on a different, completely different wave now. Like, yeah. For us to be fighting in a stupid year. Yeah. Yeah, man. But I remember, I lost the fight one time, so back in high school days. What do you guys say? High school or secondary school? Second I say year. high school, you know. I say high school, no, but yeah, I had some fight. And I'm like, I don't even say anything. But I cast up this fight, I promoted this fight now, you know. So everyone's coming to this fight after yeah. school, you know what I'm saying? Everyone's rolling now, yeah. Everyone knows 330, Rectory Park, three day. Boom. And I'm thinking, I'm just gonna smoke this youth when I come to the you know, the, whole, the whole day, I'm thinking, watch, and I'm gassing to everyone that. Like, Punch him up. Anyway, get down there now. When I say that, half of the school's there, bro. Yeah. So there's a big circle. Yeah. Big circle. We're just in the middle here. Yeah. Obviously, that like, I've got the upper hand now. So I'm feeling like the man. Yeah. Everyone's, I throw in the bag. Ooh! They have to do that. You can't even do that. Yeah, that's DW. Ooh! Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. what's it called? One of my oldest, he ruined it for me. I'm not going to lie. He said to me, Tate, kick him in the balls. <laughs> I said, all right. So I went to go kick him in the balls now, bro. Where am I? This guy's not bigger than me, bro. Grabbed my legs, both legs, yeah. Swung one on the floor. See, after that, there was no coming back, bro. Yeah, got wrapped. Jumped on. Boom. 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 Do you know what I'm saying? Then the worst part about it, yeah. After the fight was done, now, everyone's running because the like, police are coming. You see, loads of school kids fighting. Bro. One of my closest friends that I grew up with, yeah. I mean, it's Jalen. You know, I'm going to say your name because you snaked me this name. My guy, though, but he snaked me, yeah. Obviously, I've just finished losing a fight. It's like a one. I just finished losing. Yeah. <laughs> now I need to grab my bag and run because police are coming, yeah. Bro, this guy had a BMX bike with the slow things on, on the back. He's left you. I'm saying, Jay, let me jump on the back. He turned around and said, no. I rolled off. I said, no. <laughs> Snake. Snake, I couldn't believe it. You just see me get beat up and you left me. You let me walk home. Okay, good. Books. Books. Why the man didn't read? Bro, do you read? You know what? Be honest. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. yeah. When was this? I think it was last year, the year before. I read like 10 books. Wait, that. And then one day I just stopped and I've never, I never gone back to it. But I do hear that. I want to get back into it still. So. What are you reading? I read. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Strong. The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. Um, Ferrari is a Porsche. I've mean, never heard that one. Uh, I've read a few. I need to look on my phone. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've read that though. Yeah, I've read a lot, man. Yeah. I've read a lot. I think, obviously, just before you go to, I think with books, yeah, what I've realised, like, I'm, I have different, like, phases. Like, I'll be mad into a book. Like, right now, I keep telling Tate to get this book. Have you bought it yet? 
Yeah, boy, because yeah. he's like, yeah, we're going to buy it right now. No, I went to buy it. Yeah. So that, no, I was going to cheat. You told me on the phone it was £10, I went on there on that £24. Pounds. <laughs> what That's book? It, bro. It's worth it, bro. It's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. The books, um, Alex Ormosi, 100 million offers, yeah? I'm just deep in that book, like, bro, the, the books. It's a proper good book, man. Bare lessons than that I'm, I'm reading. But even to your point about reading and then not reading again, like, I go through phases, like, I have a, a phase in my life where I'm reading heavy and then like another four months where I just don't pick up one book, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it just depends on me, man. Yeah. What about you, bro? What's the question? What? Are you reading anything at the moment? I know, I'm so... Look over there. It's called, um... Machiavellian Mindset Small. It's like, um... It's like, uh... It's like a 48 Laws of Power. But obviously there's no laws, it's just teaching you how to think in a certain way. And like showing you at certain times that like, even though it sounds bad, certain times you need to step over people to get to where you need to get. Yeah. Like there's a scenario in the book, I'll give you like this scenario in it. Let's say you're on the staircase now. Yeah. You're at the bottom of the staircase, at the top of the staircase, is all of your goals, your dreams, your ambitions now, yeah. You're walking up the staircase, fine. But then when you get halfway through now, you see you see a brother there just laying on the floor. You could be sleeping, you could be going through a shit situation or whatever. Yeah. But the only way for you to get to where you need to go, you need to stand on him. Mm-hmm. When you stand on him, you're going to damage him. Like, detrimentally, there's no coming back for him. Yeah. Would you stand on that guy? Or would you stay at the step that you are on this? I give him time to get up. And then after a certain amount of time, I have to just... What does that look like, though? No, like, what, so, what, does look like, what does giving him time to get up? So, like, say in this example, when you're talking about goals, let's say related to, like, you with a man there and you're chasing a certain goal and your friend's not, like, moving correctly, I give him time, try to put him on game, try to teach him some things, try to help him, advise him on how to fix up. Mm. Then if he consistently chooses not to, mm. then I'm just going to, like, I'm stepping over you at this point. Like, I've got to get to where I'm going. I'm not going to allow you to hold me back type shit. Mm. What about you? So then at what point do you see that I'm going to step on you? I can't, I don't know about time, I'm not going to say like after a week. Yeah, no, no, but like, forget time, I'm saying that. When you see progress stops, really. When you see progress stops. Think? Like, at what point do you say that, no, like, yeah. that's a good point, that I'm stepping on my last one. Maybe when he's like directly, or well, he already is directly, like, in the way of my goals. Um, probably what you said, Brooke, still. Like, when you I'm stop seeing yeah, yourself yeah, progress. Yeah. Mm. That's the minute you get to. Mm. Oh, yeah, true. Oh, shit. The minute you get to my man, the minute you get to my man, you stop making progress. Yeah. yeah. What I said in the book, yeah, which I, I agree with, that some people saying that he deserves to get stepped on. Now, there's no way, there's no other way around it. Why? He is chosen to sit there and lay there on this step. He's in the way of what you're trying to do, so he deserves to be stepped on. At that point, he becomes a step. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So. I feel like in life, even though it sounds mad, a certain time you, you have to like push past people. Like. Yeah, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. Give an give an example of that when you would do that like, in real life. Uh, this ain't really that like, pushing past. What well, is but it's not a scenario that you're, you're gonna think it is. Yeah, but you see that like, sometimes you might wanna go to. A, but this happens better times when you me and you are going out. Like, you might want to vote in. And we'll see there's a crazy line, like, this line's ridiculous. Mm. I'm not sitting in this line, innit? So I'm gonna do whatever I can do to get out of the front of this line, innit? In the process of that, I'm pushing in front of their people, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Which isn't right. But sometimes I'm gonna think about me. I'm trying to get into this moment, you know what I'm saying? Outside. And that doesn't necessarily mean like I'm barging past everyone and saying, move out my way, it's not that. But sometimes it's about just using your wits about you, do you know what I'm saying? Like the other day me and Carter went up, we went to um R&B, Slow Jam, shout out Chucky. The line is crazy, bro, and it's raining outside as well. I'm saying, God, it's not that. So, I must have seen someone at the front of the line that I know, but I don't really know like that. I said, bro, listen, man. I know we don't really know each other like that. We're cool, but we don't really know each other like that. But today, me and you are dogs. Let me jump in with you. If you see how many people me and Ricardo would walk past, it was ridiculous, but... Me and Carter would have been sitting outside in the rain for like another half an hour, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's cool. So that's just a small example of like how sometimes you got to put yourself... I do hear that. Do you know what I mean? I can't lie, I do very much hear that, so... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to do that, man. 100 percent For real. 100 percent So I chat to him, man, what other topic do you want to talk about? 
Um, what's your lot's opinion? Do things that others won't do to have things that others won't have. Well, I think it's not for you. What's your lot thinking about that? Do you things that others won't do to have things that others won't have? Or just simply the first half. Do you think, do you agree with that statement? You should do things that other people won't. Yeah. Oh, I was, watching, I was watching something today and it said, yeah, that when you see loads of people doing the same thing, that's a clear sign that you should be doing the complete opposite. Yes. I saw that today. And I don't really know, I don't think that applies to everything. But I feel that, yeah, sometimes you've got to go against the crowd, I'm not going to lie to you. I feel that, yeah. Well, they, use that, they use that saying a lot in sports. You think? Is it? Yeah. To like gain an edge mm-hmm. type of thing. So, I think it does make sense. Yeah. What do you think, Lee? Um, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really got too much to say. Too much to say. Yeah. I think, I agree with that, you know. Heavy. Because, let's say we are public speaking, yeah? I've spoken twice internationally, like, I got sent to speak in two different countries, yeah? I spoke at ASOS, da 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 yeah? Mm-hmm. Most people wouldn't publicly speak. Like, even that post I made the other month here, you even shouted, um, said to me by as well, like, the quote, like, some people, someone did a study, and they said that people fear public speaking more than they fear death itself. That's what, that's actually mad to think, you know what I'm saying? So because most people aren't doing that, most people aren't putting this all out there, yeah? By me doing these things and stepping into that bag now, I'm already one of one, or one of very few, because 90% of people won't even put themselves in a position to do that, mm-hmm. to get on stage and speak in front of 500 people, 600 people, big brand A stuff, do you know what I mean? So, I do agree with that still. Not, appreciate it. Not yeah, even about that like, me though, yeah, but just in general, like the lesson we've been at, yeah, is sometimes you or you don't want to step into that. Sometimes you and all your friendship group might want to be like, yeah, like I might start this business, but none of them are doing it, so then you gotta do it because mm-hmm. others don't or won't want to do it. Prime example, yeah. I'm saying prime example. Yeah, my sure. dad's gonna my dad's mm-hmm. gonna resonate with this one. See me with carnival, yeah. See me naturally, yeah. If I'm rolling with the man them, I want all the man them to be involved in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when we went down to not a no carnival and we're going backstage and we're we'll shooting the t-shirts, I'm saying that, I'm saying to the security that I want to get the rest of the man in free. He's saying, no, just you and your dad. I'm saying, listen, I came with everyone, they're part of the team. Let me get them free, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, no, 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 no. Call them story short. Some of us got free, that free, I'm mad way, so did you, you know what I'm saying? But after that, my dad said, my dad said to me, listen, that, with what I'm doing with Trendsetter, there's certain rooms, there's certain doors I'm going to have to go through just by myself. Do you know what I'm saying? Think about it. Like, and he said it to me. He was inside here and he was explaining it with that door over there. Yeah. He said, is it easier for just you to walk through that door or for four men to walk through that door at the same, same time? time? Do you know what I'm saying? It's a lot easier for me to cut through by myself. And then when I get into the room, now I can say, yo, man, then come through. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I feel like I've always been the type of guy where I'm not trying to win by myself, I'm not trying to eat by myself, but sometimes you have to to make sure that everyone else can eat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'll say that to you the other day. A bear gym is that I'm packing with that, man. LT, that's, that's like, add that to the counter for real. Yeah, the first one, like, do things that others won't do. Second one, I'll drop your pops as well, and you. Like, sometimes you almost got to be selfish because I feel like you can't help others until you help yourself first. So if you're trying to put, get through this door with four people at the same time, none of you can get in. But if you get in first or climb up to a certain point first, then you can reach back and help other people get through. And that's the thing where now I can show you how to get through the door as well. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I've gone through the door now, so this is what we need to do to get through the door too. Instead of us all just trying to rush through it at one time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't even care if we keep this in here. In that first section, that should be a part one. And this should be a part Part two. two. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. And I think the third thing, even what you said mentioning me, yeah, like the way I got into that specific thing or at Carnival was a bit Jekyll. Like, security said no one could get through and me, I just jumped over, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so when it comes to this one, that's the exact same thing when I'm saying sometimes you just need to step on and step over people to get yeah. to get, like, if you didn't jump, you took an opportunity, bro. Man. You didn't take an opportunity. You wouldn't have had that experience at Carnival. I wouldn't have. You wouldn't have been able to shoot yeah. at Carnival. Yeah. LT, let's put the video 
this had a book on, so he had the entire shoot on the t-shirt yeah. in front of me. That was a legendary moment. That was still yeah. gas today. Go See on. that moment, yeah. That's a yeah. moment that when we're older, we're telling our kids that. Well, yeah. That's yeah. big. It's big. So it's big. And it's big. a documented yeah. moment. Yeah, There's a video there. You know that what I'm saying? That was hard. So. That was a serious moment, but you weren't supposed to be back there. No. You know what I'm saying? You weren't actually allowed to get back there. No. But sometimes, you just need to... You just need to do the wrong thing to do the right thing. Literally, you know yeah. I mean? literally that. Like sometimes you just gotta take the ball into your own hands, man. Like mm. it's that real. Like to set the scene and the context. Tay, your pops, and your little brother, large up to Che, yeah. Mm. You lot all got into like let's call it the VIP section, yeah. Mm. Like at the very front of Harney and like a uh, volcano sound, yeah. At the very front, and there's a. Um, Barrier here, yeah. everyone else, the normal civilians <laughs> at the back. I was one of them, yeah, not letting me through. I'm trying to cut to you for half an hour, and then all of a sudden, a fight kicked off or something over there, all the tensions over there. I saw my opportunity and I went for it. I just jumped over the thing straight away, and before you knew it, I was in. And like Tay said, if I didn't jump over, Tay would have been there regardless. I wouldn't have been on, on that stage with Tay, do you know what I mean? Like having that moment, man. And that's that's a like, that's a key moment. Can't lie. That's a very key moment, man. But <clears throat> what I found here is a lot of the times that my my big moonshots, my my most like, my biggest achievements have always come from me being in situations that I shouldn't really be in, but I just yeah. wiggled my way through. Yeah. Like even the fact that I got um fire on the side to rock the brand, didn't it? Like, that's big. One of the biggest. Yeah, the big one of the biggest dance artists. Right now. Yeah, right, right now. now. I'm gonna right say right in the world, right world about yeah. it. Right now. Right now. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. About it. He was down at Box Park, or Guy Ricardo, or Sean Ricardo. He shot him last minute. He said, Tay, listen, <clears throat> I can get into Box Park today. Fire of Messiah is going to be down there. There's no guarantees that we're going to see him, but let's go there and try. He told me, same page. That's Gem Gem Counter. Gem Counter. Mm -hmm. Gem 2. Yeah, but he said that same day, yeah. <clears throat> so I said, all right, cool, say, no, let's fly down to Box Park. Got down to Box Park now. We're kind of late. The event started at like 6.30. Byron got there like six foot five so I just made it type of thing. Yeah. Cool, so now I'm going to this place and I'm trying to think that. Like, I don't know anyone that knows Byron or Sion. He's backstage, it's not even like there's a barrier. He's in a whole different part of the building that like, he's in a whole separate room. So I'm thinking, shit, I don't know how I'm gonna get to my man. Carlos story short. When all of them was walking out for Byron to do his performance on the stage, I'm hearing da na 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Everyone's there dancing and having fun. I'm thinking, where's my opportunity? I need to find one of them. Mm. Then I see Suspect, shout out Suspect, the rapper. He's there, he's on the side of the stage and he's vibing. I tap Suspect on the shoulder. I said, Bro, let me see, you're not jumping on the stage, you're not, you're not rapping. I'm talking to him like me and my brethren. Bear in mind, I don't know him, he don't know me. Mm -hmm. But we're just talking that with G's in it. So I'm saying, let me see, you're not jumping on stage. He said, No, they won't pay me for that. Boom, boom, boom. Anyway, now I know Suspect is my way in now. Suspect is my way to, mm. to part of the Baron. Obviously, not saying Suspect's a middleman or not. Yeah, like, yeah, he's he's not. Waves on his own. Yeah, he's a, he's a G, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But that was my, that, the opportunity in front of me was to speak to Suspect, and, you know what I'm saying? Just so them man know my face now, you know what I'm saying? So, boom. Now it was time for Baron to come off stage. They're all going backstage. And then, same way, like you said, a fight breaks up. A crazy fight, everyone's fighting, everyone's taking out phones and whatnot. Security's trying to break it up. I said, What? Well, this is my time slow, so slid around the back now. Now I'm backstage and behind the stage in the VIP room and whatever. Yeah. Byron's there, suspect is there, but because I've built that little connection with suspect, and now he's your face, he knows, man. Yeah. So we're vibing. Anyway, as soon as his performance done, Byron goes outside, he's ready to go. So the suspect, I went up to suspect, I said, Bro, listen. This is my clothing brand, I had a bag full of trendsetter items. I said, this is my brand, I'm trying to get out to Byron, boom, boom, boom. Suspect, suspect said, listen bro, that go to him, he's there, let go to him, let I said, cool, suspect drove down to the bottom of the road, he met me down here. Byron was down here. I went and spoke to Byron real quick, wrapped him in, boom. This is my clothing brand, trendsetter, hold this, blah, blah, blah. gave it to him. Then the next day, a couple of days later, you sent me a snap of Byron wearing a t-shirt, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But, that would have never that's happened mad, if I didn't bro. take the opportunity. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. crazy, Honestly, bro. Yeah. Like, that's actually mad just to see, like, you was not even supposed to be there in any regard. And everything you just explained is, like, you taking advantage of a negative situation. Yeah. You was, didn't, not saying you didn't, you have to get an invite to get to Boxcar that day. But, oh, but I, didn't, I didn't even, 
I didn't even know about it, yeah? Last minute, Carter showered you. You could have said, nah, I'm too tired. You went, yeah? Turning a negative into a positive. Let's just see what happens. You get there, you see suspect. Cool, I know this person. Let me go around. Boom, opportunity. Then people are fighting. Snap around the back. Boom. You know what I mean? You position yourself. So sometimes you do kind of have to, back to what you were saying before, not even not put people down, but you just got to put yourself first and be like, regardless of what happens, I'm cutting through and doing what I need to do. And it's so, real. And even, even adding on to that, a separate thing I wanted to mention as well is that there's power within your circle. Like, really and truly, large up Ricardo for that. Do you know what I mean? Because large up Ricardo. Ricardo, I shouldn't even take the credit for that. That's Ricardo's play. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, bro. Like, that, that's what you call a friend who's a... Playmaker, I'm talking in your terms now, but get me in the bus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta be a playmaker, bro. You have to have people around you who can spot opportunities and put you on. You get it? Like, imagine if Cardo was like, like Cardo obviously would have thought, yeah, this person's performing, my bro's got a brand, let me try and see. Do you know what I mean? At least he attempted to connect the dots and he did. This is a good friend still. Cardo's my guy, yeah. When you deep it, bro, yeah, Cardo's been the connecting point to a lot of shit that's happening now. Even this podcast. Yeah. The reason this podcast exists Cardo. through Cardo, bro. Yeah, bro. Cardo invited me to this party. I shouldn't have been there. <laughs> I'm saying you don't know what Cardo's like, yeah. already, but I shouldn't have been there. If it weren't for Cardo, yeah, would Energizer have. would never exist. It wouldn't. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it it's different. Bro. That's the man still. That's Cardo. Yeah, that's so and he's never, he hasn't even come on the podcast. Nah, we'll bring him on. Yeah, when you watch this, bro, still. you're coming on. You're next, still. You're next up, man. You're coming through, man. But I think that's the lesson within that, man. Just with who's in your circle, because. If you can't confidently say that your friends will put your name forward when you're not in the room or behind closed doors or at least try and help you in what, with what you're doing, why are they in your circle? Because like, we can confidently say that Ricardo's here connecting dots. Let's just say on your way for Chancellor, he's connecting you for opportunity. He didn't get nothing necessarily, but he's still doing it because he's just a team hard guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, so who's in your circle to do that kind of thing? Yeah, there, man? Those are the type of people that... Some people are just proud, so you can't really put a price on people, do you know what I'm saying? Like, Cardo, like, I consider Cardo as family. Like, I always say to him, my win is your win, best believe that. Like, the minute yeah. that I cut through in anything that I've done, you've won as well, automatically, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's how I'm with you, you man, like, all of you, man, still there. Like, that's just the way I see it, still there. Like. Yeah. And I know how many it is here, it's there. Like, I know once one of us get through to the other side and really cut through. It's opening the door for everyone. Yeah, everyone because yeah. now we can see that raw, like one man really done it. Like one man yeah. made the first M. One man really made a million pounds. And that's yeah. my bedroom. You've got to know what I'm Yeah, man can do that. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's, I feel like there's two different types of people. There's some people that are envious when their friends cut through to the other side. Yeah. And there's some people that congratulate them. And yeah. I see something the other day. They said, um, if your friends have been getting hit with bare blessings, just know that God's in your neighborhood. Like he's in you, he's on your block, God's in your block in it. So now some amount of time like, like your one comes. Yeah, that one's big, that one's sure. That one's big. Say that one again, say that one again. So I said, if one of your people, one of your friends just got hit with a crazy blessing, yeah. Like, don't be disheartened about it because that means God's in the neighborhood, isn't it? So yeah. if God's in the neighborhood now, that means I go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. I'm saying, yeah, if God's in your neighborhood now, that means you're next, isn't it? Like, he's got a package ready for you. Yeah. I feel like sometimes you can fumble your own bag by being envious of the people that That's are so around true. you, you know what I'm saying? That's so true. And I, I even said this a minute, but I'm going to say it again, yeah, like, you really need to just be cautious of, like, who's in your circle type shit, because say when Tay gets something, or he has an achievement, or he wins, or he does something, yeah, I don't really feel envious at all, because... I just know that I need to double down on what I'm doing. That inspires me that somebody who I'm par with, rubbing shoulders with, yeah, is hitting these levels. You, you've created a brand that's touching people's favourite artists, mm -hmm. artists, podcast, podcast, Byron, this, that, the first you get. So when, when it comes to me and my lane, I'm thinking, nah, bro, I was on gear three, I need to go to gear five now because they just hit a milestone. I mean, let me turn it up. Man. You know what, like, see when a man them achieve something big, yeah, yeah. obviously, that. Like, you're gonna have that feeling inside that like, I need to do Cardo. But you see me, bro, that like, I'm just happy for you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, I've got my own internal like, motion. Like, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's that like, above everything, I'm just happy for you, bro. Like, yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, innit? Let's continue doing what you're doing because, yeah. like, I, for example, now, let's just say, let's bring it back to basketball, yeah? Brooke, if you, if you win MVP, yeah? 
most valuable player. Just know your whole team's took a W for them, do you know what I'm saying? That's not just you taking a dub, your whole team's taking a dub, and that's the way that I see it, man. Like, if I let the man them achieve something, that like, I'm happy for you, bro. Let's keep doing what you're doing. Do you not stop, do you know what I mean? No. So, what do you think, bro? Nah, I'm, I can't do anything but agree, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be honest. Nah, it's real still. <laughs> Damn, bro, what are you saying? Firing the barber shop today. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Look at this message I just got. This is what I mean when I say that. The man them are really doing their thing. Kozak just shouted us. Shout out Kozak. He said, I just came 10 centimetres away from landing a 4.5k 4. 4. client. Do you know what I'm saying? Even though he didn't land it, it's like, that's big yeah, figures. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? And the fact that you came that close yeah. to landing 4.5k, yeah. keep doing what you're doing, bro. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? I feel like as well, I agree with that so much. Yeah. Like, we're getting closer, bro. Like, do, do you feel like that as well? Like, you must just feel like it's, it's, it's not that far away. Yeah. People are, um, I can't even speak, bro, for blood clot. Our age mates, yeah, people in our circle are hitting these big numbers, big figures. So, we are closer than we think, you know what I'm saying, to whatever goal you have in your head still. That's what I think. Yeah, bro. Oh, yeah. I'm just on the, I'm on the, you spin it, yeah? Yeah, see you later. I'm on a I'm on a God's timing thing. I'm not gonna lie to you still. Yeah. So whenever God feels like it's my time to cut through and hit them achievements, then shh, you got me. Yeah. Let's talk about church, man. Damn, let's talk about church. Uh, how, was, how was church for you on Tuesday? Do you go to church, bro? Are you religious? Mm, not really. Like, I'm trying to get closer to God. Yeah. That. No. Mm. Like before, I wasn't too bothered about it. I'll mm. be honest. Mm. But even today, bro, I was speaking to my mum about getting baptized, bro. Right. Yeah, it's like I woke up this morning and it was the first thing on my mind, bro. Yeah. As soon as I woke up, I like I felt it in my stomach, bro. See, ah, oh, this runs a bit. Dash my phone, bro. I oh swear. shit! Oh my god, that's good. How come my phone bounced off the chair, bro? Like, no, but do you know what? Yeah, I was saying this to you yesterday, bro. Yeah, yeah. like these things. You see that feeling you had, yeah. yeah. That's not a sign, that's an instruction, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's God saying, listen, it's your time, like, you need to pattern this thing. Yeah, I haven't yeah. put this feeling inside of you for no reason. Bro, it was crazy, bro. Like, Do you know what I mean? I felt my stomach, it felt like I was gonna cry, bro. And me, I don't cry. Yeah, but bro, it was, it's crazy. Like, the God thing is real, bro. Like, it's not even a joke. I used to not take it serious, yeah. Bro, I tell you, I don't think I've even told you this story, yeah. There's one time. I was just going through bare shit, just bare shit happening, yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking the only way that man can really pattern this is God in it. That man tried everything else. Yeah. yeah. That man's tried everything else, but nothing's working. Well, one time I said, cool, let me just pray. And I said, listen, if this God, if, if you're real God, just show me in it. Let me get a feeling. I mean, brother, I'm sitting, he's like, no, bro. You know what? I was sitting inside my room one time, praying, and then. My body just started feeling mad weird, but as soon as I said that, show me that you're here, if you're real, and show me that's, I just need one time for confirmation, and the rocking, bro, I started feeling mad weird in my room, bro, I'm not gonna lie to you, yeah. now I can just feel something in my chest, yeah, yeah bro, it's weird. That's exactly how I felt this morning, dude. Can't even explain. And another thing is, yeah, I got one auntie, yeah. shout out auntie Sonia, yeah. shout out her, oh, like, she's the most, like, God-fearing woman I know, mm. church, every, every time she needs to go. Mm. Imagine she was on the phone to my mum mm. when I went and told her that I want to get baptized. So out of everyone, bro. See, nothing happens for me. Out of oh, yeah. everyone. Oh, should I tell the story? Tell the story, bro. Should I tell the story? Tell the story, bro. No, I'm not even facing it. I told the story when I'm facing the camera. So. <laughs> but it's a deeper story that yeah. was not even a joke. I, I, I hear it still. I went, um, me and Coles went to church on Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, I was at that all on Tuesday. Bro, I was sitting inside service, I was pissed off because I'm saying, you see if you came to this service, oh my days, bro. Obviously, the one you came to yeah. weren't the best introduction, like, yeah. you got dropped into the deep end, I'm not going to lie. But yeah. that service that we had on on Tuesday, bro, yeah, it was a completely different vibe. Dude. No one was on what they was on last time, mm. do you know what I'm saying? Like, everyone was just, do you know what I'm saying? Even what he was talking about, it was different. Bro. I was thinking, this is the one that time needs to come to, I'm not going to lie to you. I'll go again. You know what's mad as well? I got a call. Did I tell you that someone someone from the church, like the organization, called me? Uh, Jums. Yeah, Jummy, Jummy. Jummy. Yeah. Jummy, yeah, Jummy. Yeah, Jummy. Yeah, yeah. She called me on like um, 
think it was a Monday, and I'm just literally cooking dinner, cooking dinner for mum's here, and I was cooking up. And then she called me, and I was having like a 40 minute call, call with her, bro, just yeah. catching up. Mm. Obviously, I don't know if I'm, I don't know, I was telling her about like, my beliefs and that. So, you guys will know if you've been tapping in with us for time. Me, you, Black Travel Bay, shout her out as well, just gone again. We had a conversation, like a bit of a heated debate, and I was kind of a bit more, nah, slavery, this, and then, you know what I mean? My mind frame was just different. Mm. Now, Tay's obviously been, as he's started to build a relationship with God, he's been passing it on to me and the people around him. So, I'm like, let me be more. Let me tell you why, though, yeah. I go. Let me tell you why I've been putting on to my people, man. Yeah. And I'd be a prick if I did it, man. It's like, the way I see it, if I know that I've got a set way to make a million pounds, and I know how to make a million pounds, it's proven I've done it myself. I'd be a prick not to let you even know. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, ever since I've been tapping, on, tapping in with God a lot more, it's like, um, there you go. I've got like a different level of like, you see that when I first met you? Yeah. yeah. I put a lot of pressure on myself to make sure that I was going to be successful. You see, no, I don't have that same pressure because I know it's going to happen. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I said a minute ago, whenever God's ready for it, I'm ready for it type of thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've reached a certain level of peace. And I'll be a prick if I didn't put you lot onto that as well. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? No, I do hear that, man. I feel like now, my mindset now is I'm just a lot more open to it like re- receiving it. I'm not saying, I'm not going to label myself and say I am this or I am yeah. that. Religious, not religious, spiritual, whatever. I'm just me and I'm just learning. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm a sponge. I'm soaking up all the knowledge from people around me. So, yeah. The convo with, with Jumi, yeah, it was good though. It was good. Um, and I said to her on the call that I'd be open to going again as well. So, but yeah, man. It's interesting still. But I feel like even with like religion, spirituality, whatever, it's just so important to have a higher power in your life. Whatever that medium looks like for you, whether it's Islam, Christianity, whatever, the universe, whatever it is, yeah, it's just so crucial to have a higher power in your life. That's kind of changed, bro. That's kind of changed for you, bro. I remember what was happening on a podcast one time. You said that it's all of you. And I remember you said that, um, yeah. You said that it's all of you. You said one time, if you ever got into a car accident, man, hold on, you talk, I'm not trying to fuck up. I'm like, let me just start to be serious, <laughs> innit? <laughs> yeah. You talk, you talk, you talk. Aye, that's funny. I pause quickly, yeah? Quick interval, yeah? We do not do any proper advertisements for this podcast here. We don't ask you guys for anything, but we're having some serious conversations right now. And the same way you found out of the podcast, whether it be through TikTok or through a referral from a friend, Pass that light on because this episode could help somebody for real. So don't even do it for us to see, subscribe and like and comment. Pass it on to somebody else. All you've got to do is click a button to subscribe. All you've got to do is leave a review on Spotify. These things help put it out to more people. And you don't know these type of conversations can change somebody else's life. So don't think of yourself. Don't even think of us. Think about however many other people you could help by just sharing the point, man. But yeah. In terms of in terms of the whole what do you call it, religion thing, like, yeah, bro, you're right, because I was, that's what I'm saying, last year, I had more of a fixed mindset around religion and spirituality, like, I, I had it in my head, I have my belief system, that's my belief system, everything else is beside that, it's not me, do you get it, but now, I'm like, just because I lean more into one thing at this point in time, doesn't mean to say I can't learn from this other thing, that's what I shouldn't call religion a thing, you know what I'm trying to say, and like, I feel, where everybody around me, you, close up, my other boys, like some of, like Antonio, my cousin, like Dev, you lot are heavy in your religion, Christianity. So I feel like if a lot of people in my circle are preaching about the same thing, there has to be some truth in it, there has to be some learning, there has to be some growth or something in it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think it's just a lesson within myself to just be more open minded, man. So yeah.